After watching many 3D animated movies like Ratatouille, Tangled, Frozen, at one point you probably looked at the characters and thought, how the heck does Disney make that realistic hair? I mean, just look at it. It looks just like human hair. Hello my friends, I'm Paulo, and I'm a CGI artist with a bachelor's degree in computer animation. And I know what you're thinking, why do you look like a Hispanic version of Anderson Cooper? And to that I have no answer. But something I can explain to you is how Disney makes that realistic hair. And today my 3D people, I'm gonna explain to you what hair simulation is, how Disney uses it to make that realistic hair, and I'm gonna show you how you can make your own CGI hair at home. Well, let's start with the concept of hair simulation. According to the Wikipedia, <clears throat> when am I gonna start speaking? Uh, okay, go ahead. According to the Wikipedia, a simulation is a process of mathematical modeling performed on a computer, which is designed to predict the behavior or outcome of a real world physical system. In other words, simulations copy what happens in the real world. And surprisingly enough, Many formulas that you learned in high school can actually be used to describe hair and how it behaves. Things like mass, gravity, and speed. We're here talking about formulas and physics and math, but how does it all look inside a computer? This is a hair particle attached to a sphere. And you can see that the way it moves, it's behaving similarly to the way hair moves. And as I mentioned previously, you can use formulas like gravity, so I can control the gravity here and the hair will behave differently. So far we looked at a single particle, but let's look at something that would look more like a full head of hair. For that, we're gonna build our little fur ball. And although it doesn't look like a fur ball, it looks more like something that comes from the deepest part of the ocean. This little guy here will help us understand how hair behaves inside of a computer. So at one point, I'm gonna show you how those particles are gonna turn into realistic looking hair. But for now, I animated this little guy here spinning right and left. And as you can see, the particles move with the character. And he has some weight, we can understand the speed, and most importantly, it has some follow through. What that means is, even when the character stops moving, the hair moves just a little bit and gives that sense of realism. But as you may know, not every hair is created equal. Although this is really useful to describe straight hair, how can we describe curly hair? Using math. Curly hair doesn't really behave like this pair of earbuds, but more like a spring. And luckily for us, there's a mathematical formula that describes springs, and it's called Hooke's Law, which is a formula that describes the force needed to compress or stretch a spring. You can apply a force to it yourself, or let the force of gravity does its job. And as a result, you get spring energy. In Hooke's Law, he also put into consideration stiffness, because you know, not every spring is a slinky. Look at this. Spring, for example. It is so stiff that gravity does not generate enough force to stretch it. So you literally have to stretch it yourself. And the force this spring is generating is equal to the amount of force I'm applying to it, but in the opposite direction. So when I let go of it, the spring flies away. So with all of that in mind, how can we use Hooke's Law to create curly hair? If we apply the concept of Hooke's Law into our simulation, we can determine how stiff our hair is gonna be and how springy it's gonna behave. So if we put all those formulas together, we can create curly hair. And as you can see here, increasing the stiffness will make the hair keep more of its shape. We have a lot of complexity going on here. And you can imagine a poor animator trying to animate every single hair by hand and how painful it would be. And probably realistic hair wouldn't even be a thing in animated movies. Since we're using math to describe how hair behaves in our simulation, the animators can focus on what matters in the film, which is the story. You may be thinking, wow, that's it? I can work at Disney then. That's an easy job. I mean, once someone codes the software, it's just a matter of designing the hair, right? Wrong. Although computer simulations are good, they're not perfect. Just look at these failed tests from Disney. 
Like, poor Rapunzel. She doesn't deserve that. And that's a problem with collision. Not only does the hair have to behave like hair, obeying all the laws of physics that we have in our lives, it has to collide with the character, with the environment, and itself. And that's why Disney has an entire team dedicated only to making the characters hair. They run simulations and test and test over and over again until they get it just right, which means getting all the behaviors right and the collisions to work. But you're looking at this and you're probably wondering, yeah, but this is still very different from the final result. I mean, that's not how the final hair looks like. So how do they do it? So although the particles tell the hair how to behave, it's not what you see in the final movie. They're like seeds that bring to life what you see in the final movie. So let me show you an example. So here I have my fur ball and you can see immediately that there's more going on here. Remember those yellow tentacles that we saw earlier in the video? This is what it is right here. It is highlighted in green. So these I use to generate the hair. So instead of me seeing everything that would be in the final result that would take the computer forever to process, I can just see a simplified version of that with the seeds. But then we can tell the seeds to generate the simulation. And let me just run a test here. Click play. And as it process, you can see that those particles are generating fur or hair. And from here, I'm gonna create a little animation so you can see how the hair is gonna behave. So here in this little animation, you can see there are a little fur ball is looking a lot more like realistic hair than what we saw previously. However, there's a little problem with our little guy here. The hair doesn't look very realistic. You see, it's too smooth, it's too symmetrical, even for straight hair. You know, straight hair has little clumps. Aha, clumps. That's another step you need to generate a more natural looking hair. And there are various forms of clumping. And one of them uses math again. They use the Voronoi diagram. According to the Wikipedia, in mathematics, a Voronoi diagram is a partition of a plane into regions close to each of a given set of objects. And the result that we get is something that can be found in nature. Like the wings of a dragonfly, elephant skin, leaves, and many others. If the Voronoi diagram uses seeds that generate a more organic shape that can be found in nature, we can use that to describe clumps. And that's what we're gonna do. So after I add some clumps here to our hair, we're gonna run the simulation again with the animation and we'll compare the result. And as you can see here, although our little fur ball is not very realistic, you can see that you can get a natural feel from the hair. And that's what we're looking for in our characters. And I think you're noticing a pattern here. Many concepts from mathematics and physics are being used to describe this hair. So if by any chance you bump into Katy Perry one day and she asks you, is math related to science? You can say, yes, but also art. Okay, so fur balls are cool and all, but they're not characters with hair. So let's get to the most exciting part, which is creating our own hair. So let's gather all our knowledge and apply to this hair right now. And I'm gonna show you how Disney makes it and how you can make this hair at home too. So let's get started. So right here, I have a software called Maya. And the plugin I'm using for the hair is called Ornatrix or Ornatrix, I don't know, you decide. And my little character here has a normal geometry hair, but we want to turn this into simulated hair. So for that, I'm going to put this character here in a separate layer and I'm just going to gray it out so I can use it as reference or hide it from now. And here I have this scalp. So it's really important that you create this scalp. And if you're looking at this, it's like, yeah, Maya is very expensive and Ornatrix is very expensive. Yes, they are. So I recommend using Blender if you're just starting out and you're just new to this. The process will probably be the same, 
you'll certainly see a different UI, but the idea is the same. So let's start. So here with the scalp, we are going to create our hair. Create a fur ball. Create. Oh my God. This looks pretty crazy, but we have to fix this. So hair from guides, we don't need to see the hair now. We just need to see the particles, the seeds. Let's hide the hair and look at this now. Jeez, looks like a bunch of needles. This is like, ew, gives me the chills a little bit. So guides from mesh, let's shorten the length. And now he looks like a member of the Slipknot band. And we can reduce the count to one. So we have only one single isolated particle here. And you'll see why. Now we go to edit particles, uh, edit guides, and plant guide. So probably this is what every 3D software is gonna use, which is you can plant the guides instead of having the computer automatically generating them. So I can choose to plant a guide right here. And I go back to my hair, bring it back. And I can start editing it. Let's click on our little comb icon here. And let's increase the brush strength. Make it a little bit stronger. And let's start shaping our hair. And here I can increase the length too. It's a little bit short. In fact, it's very short. Oops. So right here. Oops. Too much. Let's get the comb and woo! Let's start shaping the hair, man. Get the hair right here. Okay, and you see that we're using the previous hair, the geometry hair, as a reference. Let's just stretch. So right here, this moment is where the artist is just going to take a lot of time going through this and placing the guides and shaping the hair and making sure that it looks like the original concept art. So I'm going to skip this part. I'm going to do the whole head and I'm going to come back later and show you a little bit of the final result. So guys, after a little while of placing all those guides and particles and shaping them to exactly how I want them to be, you can see how we have our hair here, the overall shape. And it looks nothing like the final <laughs> result with the real hair. But as I mentioned before, this is just the seeds. And I also went in and made the eyebrows and the eyelashes. You can see the sideburn, the sideburns and their shape. And um, okay, let's go in and render this so you can see how it looks like. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoy it. So guys, here's my character with realistic hair. And we've come a long way from that little particle there behaving like a hair to this full head of hair that looks pretty realistic. So we learned a lot about hair simulation, what it actually is, how it works, and how Disney uses it to make the realistic hair. So now you're ready to go and make your own 3D animated film, right? <sighs> Not exactly. Actually, there's a lot more that goes into a 3D film. There's modeling, rigging, lighting, rendering, animating, voice acting, storyboarding, and sometimes even motion capture. Comment down below what you thought of this video and let me know if you want me to turn this into a series. Maybe I can uncover the mysteries of 3D animated films. Make sure to smash like, subscribe, and I'll see you the next time, maybe. Uncovering the next mystery 
of a 3D animated film. Bye.